Hey everyone! Today I'm talking about the games I'm most looking forward to, which are coming out in 2018. Or at least say they're coming out in 2018. The first game I want to talk about is Jurassic World Evolution. This one is being developed by Frontier Developments and is expected to release for PC, Xbox One, and PS4 sometime in summer of 2018. This is a simulation game where you build a park, get to excavate archaeology sites, and research and evolve dinosaurs. I'm expecting Jurassic World Evolution to be a lot like Operation Genesis, which is a game I reviewed last year and really enjoyed. I'm expecting a sort of newer, shinier coat of paint on it, as well as some new mechanics and new things to do with the dinosaurs. I've always been a really big fan of the sort of offbeat business sim simulation games, and this is definitely right up my alley. I love Jurassic Park, and I find that adding dinosaurs to anything generally makes it better. However, that said, while I do plan to build an amazing park full of great dinosaurs, once I get it to a certain point, I'm definitely looking forward to knocking all the fences down and letting the dinosaurs eat their captors. While we're on the topic of offbeat business simulation games, I'm really looking forward to Two Point Hospital. This is a spiritual successor to Theme Hospital, and it's being developed by Two Point Studios, which has some of the same developers that used to work at Bullfrog, which made Theme Hospital, as well as Lion's Head Studios. Currently, it's just been announced as coming out late in the year for PC. That does give me a little bit of pause. Games do tend to get delayed, so this might not realistically come out until 2019. This looks to be retaining the original game's sense of humor. Rather than treating people with real-life illnesses, it looks like it's all sort of funny, made-up illnesses to sort of keep the tone light. In the original, there was sort of commentary on the darker sides of healthcare, and I really hope that that is going to stay in place as well. So it looks like I am going to have a lot to do in terms of simulation games over the next year or so. The next game I'm really looking forward to is State of Decay 2. This is being developed by Undead Labs and is obviously the sequel to State of Decay 1. It is slated for release at some mystery time in 2018 for Xbox One and PC. The first State of Decay game was a lot of fun. You play as a group of survivors and can choose which one to play as at any time and switch between them as needed. It also did something cool in that if a survivor died, they were dead forever. Rather than just be about fighting zombies, it's also very much a resource management and base building game, which is something that I absolutely love. There was also a bit of a people management aspect where you had to make sure that people were doing jobs that were suited to them and that they were getting along. I hope the sequel smooths out some of the first game's rougher edges, but at the same time, I hope they don't change too much or make it too big. The first game had an open world, but it was a perfect size for me. Uh, there was a lot to explore, a lot to discover, but it never felt overwhelming. My one fear is that that seems to be where games are going, just bigger and bigger maps. So I hope that they stay with a more slightly contained map. Uh, one other thing they're doing is they are introducing up to four-player multiplayer so you can play with friends. That's not something that particularly appeals to me in this situation, uh, but it might be fun for others. The next game I'm excited for is Sunless Skies, which is developed by Fail Better Games, who made the game Sunless Sea and Fallen London. Now this game has been available on Steam in Early Access for quite some time, but I am not a player of Early Access games. I would rather wait until the finished product. Sunless Skies is a follow-up to Sunless Seas, which is a game I really loved. It's a sort of Victorian, Gothic, Lovecraft-inspired narrative game. In this one, I believe you'll be on an airship exploring different areas, different sort of islands in the sky, meeting people, getting quests. The thing that really stands out about these games is the fantastic writing. 
There's one thing I would love to see an improvement of over Sunless Seas, and that is a better journal system. The game had a ton of stuff to do, but it didn't make it easy to keep track of it. But I'm definitely looking forward to just more of its fantastic writing and world building. Pillars of Eternity 2 Deadfire is being developed by Obsidian and is set to release on April 3rd. Obsidian just generally makes fantastic computer role-playing games, and Pillars of Eternity 1 was one of my top games of the year in 2015. In fact, I think it was my game of the year. This looks to be another spin on the traditional CRPG, with characters to get to know and an intricate story to uncover. The last game included an upgradable base, which I thought was one of the coolest parts of the game. You could upgrade it in order to attract shopkeepers and NPCs to sort of level up your characters in different ways, gain different benefits. Uh, this one looks like it's going to feature an upgradable ship, which will not only serve as your base, but also your method to traverse a chain of islands. I really never get sick of good computer role-playing games. They are one of my favorite genres, so I'm hoping Pillars of Eternity 2 delivers just as much of a great story and great abilities and great characters as the first game. Finally, an original game. Sea of Thieves is being developed by Rare and is releasing very soon on March 20th. This is a multiplayer pirate game that you can play on Xbox One or PC, and I believe there will be crossplay between the two of them. As much as I'm not usually a fan of multiplayer games, this one looks like a lot of fun to play with friends. I really love the game's colorful art style and how goofy it looks. There's not enough games that really embrace having a sense of humor, so I've really come to appreciate that. The water effects in the ocean look amazing, and I really like the character designs, and I can't wait to find out what exactly you can do in this game, since I haven't been following the development all that closely. It's something I kind of want to be surprised by. I can't wait to find some treasure and make some scurvy dogs walk the plank. Arr. Frostpunk is developed by 11-Bit Studios and is scheduled to be released at the end of March. This is made by the same developers who made This War of Mine, which is a survival and resource management game that I really enjoyed. It was a very depressing game, is one I wouldn't consider a fun game, but it was mechanically very sound and sort of emotionally affecting, and a game I found that I couldn't put down. Frostpunk looks to be a game about city building, resource management, and strategy. Just like this war of mine, this game looks very, very bleak. You're tasked with keeping a colony alive amidst a frozen wasteland. I'm sure the game will be filled with difficult decisions where there might not be a real right answer. I don't know what it is about me and loving games that are depressing and make me make hard choices that are going to let some people live and some people die, but uh, this game looks right up my alley and I look forward to playing it at the end of the month. Where the Water Tastes Like Wine is a narrative-based game developed by Serenity Forge and Dim Bulb Games. It does not have a release date, but is supposed to be coming out sometime this year. This is a game about traveling, sharing stories, and surviving Manifest Destiny. Throughout the game, you travel America, meeting people and hearing their tales. This looks to be a game that's based on sort of vignettes, and it gives me a little bit of that kind of magical realism, sort of folksy feel so that something like a Kentucky Route Zero would have. Uh, I, when I first saw this announced, it also listed the writers that were contributing to it, and there were a lot of them, like probably 20, and they were all writers I really respected and really enjoyed their work. So I think this has the potential to be a fantastic narrative experience. I also really like the aesthetic. Uh, the art is very cool, and I really like the sort of tarot theme that seems to be happening throughout the advertisements. Vampire is being developed by Don't Nod and is releasing in spring of 2018. Vampire? Vampire? Vampire. Vampire? This is an action role-playing game where you play a vampire in Victorian England. 
Your vampire you play is a doctor who is struggling with his need to kill and his oath to save people. Again, I haven't paid too, too much attention to the development of this game, as I like to be surprised, but there seems to be a focus on communicating and relationships with people in the city, maybe even solving some mysteries, so I'm hoping that it'll be heavy on the RPG aspects and not quite as heavy on the action elements. Honestly, I just want this game to fill the Vampire the Masquerade bloodline-shaped hole in my heart that has existed since I first played that game. Uh, while I don't feel overly confident that this game is going to do that, um, I'm not sure about what kind of sort of sense of humor it has or how seriously it takes itself, uh, but it is a game that at least looks original. Uh, there's not too many vampires in games anymore, not like there are zombies. So I will definitely give this game a shot and hopefully it pleasantly surprises me. Now lastly, just a couple special mentions. Uh, the first one is uh, already released because it took me a while to make this video, but it is the Shadow of the Colossus remake. Uh, I haven't picked it up yet. That doesn't mean I'm not excited about it, but I do plan on getting it and plan on playing it. Honestly, what I really want from this game is just for it to feel like what I remember from when I originally played it. Uh, when I first played it, I didn't really notice any of the sort of jankiness with the controls or the horse. Uh, so I just want it to sort of feel like the first time, which, uh, I don't know, that might be too much to ask, but I'll see when I finally play it. The next one is Shadow of the Tomb Raider, at least I think it's going to be called Shadow of the Tomb Raider. That's what uh, the announcement seems to indicate. Uh, the only reason this is a special mention is because I know nothing about it. I mean, I assume it'll continue in the tradition of uh, Tomb Raider and Rise of the Tomb Raider, but I haven't heard anything. And though they I think it was said it was going to come out this year. I don't have a ton of confidence just because I haven't seen any information, but uh, based on the first two games, that'll be a game I enjoy. And lastly is Ori and the Will of the Wisps. I loved the original Ori in the Blind Forest. It's one of the best platformers I've played. I thought it was beautiful. I thought it was heartbreaking. I'm very much looking forward to this new entry in the series. I just have no idea when it's coming out. So it might be 2018, but it could very well not be. All right, so that's it for now. Those are the games I'm most looking forward to being released in 2018. I hope they actually do come out in 2018. Let me know in the comments what games you're looking forward to. Uh, are there any from my list or do you think there are other games that look awesome as well? Thanks for watching. I'll see you next time.